Goedemiddag, bij Moesek TV, een uitzending van Radio Duin Feuer bij Radio Duin School van Muziek. Het is weer eens een uitzending in samenwerking met Media24, Volksblad en ons aanbieders voor de CCS is Elreda Brits, kunstredacteur van Volksblad en de directeur van Radio Duin School van Muziek, professor Michael Vilhoen. Ons twee gasten in die atelier vandaag is Stefan Temmen, Zuid-Afrikaanse blokfluitspeler en zijn muziekgenoot voor ons concert gisteravond, Axel Wolf. Alreda en Nicole, over to you. Gentlemen, a great welcome to you. It has been an unforgettable experience for us. Um, Stefan, um, I met him for the first time when he was still a baby. And it is um, it's such an interesting situation just to give you an idea of where Stefan comes from. He is the son of the very famous Rulof Temin, composer, uh, and part of, of a whole the Temin dynasty, which has had a huge influence on our South African musical life. And Stefan is the man who went out to Europe and became a world-class recorder player. A recorder, I don't know what to call that. <laughs> recorder player. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Try to make it <laughs> In any case, so it's, 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 it's wonderful to have you here and uh, I think I will ask my colleague here to perhaps start a few questions with you and then I'll, I'll close off. <clears throat> Stefan, um, it's quite strange to find a virtuoso recorder player because what we used to is that you start off with get your introduction to music through the recorder mm -hmm. as a young child and then you leave it and you do some other stuff or other instruments that you carried on. What was so attractive about the recorder that you carried on even after school and still playing it? Well, there's a number of reasons for that. Um, speaking about my family, I liked the fact that they all didn't exactly understand me. Why do I play this rather simple instrument? Most of them uh, play the organ, and I choose only one pipe of the organ, and was sort of, I must say, a part of it is probably a small rebellish um, part in me that I want to have a distance to my family, not playing a, a orchestra instrument. And that's probably one reason. The other reason is certainly that I like the simplicity of the instrument. It's simply a piece of wood with a couple of holes. You simply blow into it and it makes a sound. And you, there's no complicated system between me and the instrument. If you compare it to a clarinet, there's this key system on top of it, which I don't like. I like the simplicity of the recorder very much. Alex, can I ask you, why did you choose the lute, which is also not a very um, common instrument? In fact, it took me quite a long time to choose the lute because I just started with 25 or 23. I started right away with guitar when I was nine, and then I played basically everything. I was at school known as the guy who plays every instrument. Really? I played, Name the others? I played clarinet and saxophone because I had a jazz band. I was writing the the uh, the bass lines for the bass player. I was writing the chords for the guitar player because they all were, all were my students. And so I did a lot of improvising, but guitar always was my main instrument. And then I started to study at the university. And um, my theory teacher told me how the system of basso continuo playing works. So, and I did that right away because uh, it was all in my head, and I combined it with improvising. And then it was pretty fast uh, that I realized now I need to have a lute to play the Baroque and Renaissance uh, music on the lute. Is, is there a big difference between a guitar and a lute? Is it, how many strings does the lute have? Well, there's, there are many, many different lutes. This lute that I have today has 14 strings. They could be double as well. Um, the, the basic lute, let me say, starts with six double courses. Um, but um, this one with 14 strings is the, one of the biggest that you can play. Um, I remember we had a conversation yesterday afternoon at lunch 
in connection with the role of the lute and how this relates to guitarists. And I was fascinated by the fact that you that you indicated that the lute actually has, because of the because of the present performance situation and the great interest in in, in early music revival, has can have much more work at hand than guitarists who has to have a of necessity have a kind of lonesome life. They they usually just play solo concerts and so on. Uh, I'm interested. To to uh, to know from you, to what extent uh, can we try and improve this? I think it hasn't yet caught on in South Africa that the lute is really an important instrument. We think of it as something of a distant time. The guitar is much more prevalent because of because of popular music and jazz, and and of course also the interest in classical guitar. But the lute as as a as a different as a different place in, in our music society. Yeah, it's, um, you're right. It's, it's, there, there, is a, there can be a big place because if you play lute, um, everybody needs you. Record a player, they need you to accompany singers, yeah. violin players, or even an orchestra when you play baroque pieces. You can perform all these great works. Of course, you can play a lot of solo stuff as well, but the most important thing is that you have a huge field of, of accompanying. So that means what we talked yesterday, um, the difference is um, a guitarist who wants to play a lot needs to sit two hours a, a day on the telephone <laughs> trying to get solo concerts. <laughs> I can just sit relaxed and it then my telephone be. rings and I say, yeah, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll do. I'd like to play with you or say no sorry I don't have time because my schedule is already full yeah. Yeah. and so, so I can recommend everybody who is interested in going into this field even to start to play continue on the yeah. guitar or to try to get into this field and then of course it's a, it's a change to switch to lute but um, this work uh, is really worth it. Uh, Stefan for you I <coughs> I've noticed and it was with great um, admiration that I saw that you are you have been mastering all the Baroque music for for recorder, which I think is absolutely wonderful. But I, th I think it also has to have uh, it, it had an impetus because of the huge movement towards historically informed performance practice, which started in the early 70s or thereabouts, and has become a most prominent movement. Um, and if I think back on the very specialized work of last night, especially the two main composers, mm -hmm. Dowland and Corelli, um, how do you see also the way forward in which we could so-called spread the news in terms of this new movement uh, being so important for, you know, for our music students to become aware of and for our public to become aware of um, it, I guess it is a it is a, a very prominent aspect with lots of a, a wide influence in Europe and America, I presume. Yes, um, it's also to be said that um, one tends to think of histor historical informed performance practice. It's only Baroque music, but it's not at all. Um, uh, like Sir Roger Norrington, who visited South Africa, I heard um, in Johannesburg, yeah. he even conducts Wagner mm -hmm. and is then yes. very strict about how Wagner should sound like and also, which is quite good, the, even the Wagner op or operas, they get shorter, which <laughs> <laughs> when, when Norrington conducts them, which is quite a relief. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the, 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 there was an interview once on the Radio 3 program in BBC and they, they get, you know, the music was like this before the period guys came in and steam cleaned everything. <laughs> So but it's a sobering process going on. I want it more done, more yeah. understandable. Yes. <laughs> the only thing that I, that what is Sir Roger Norrington does, or we do, we simply tend to think about music more what was the original uh, message yeah. of the music. And that we want to get yeah. across to our audience. Mm. That's mm. the most important thing yeah. about Absolutely. performance. Yeah. And I would like to see that also 
on all other instruments, also on a modern Steinway instrument. Exactly. Yeah. Not, it doesn't have to be a recorder or a lute, it's yeah. all instruments. You should start and think, why do I play this piece? And why did the composer compose this piece? Exactly. Yes. And what message yeah. is in both, is, is in me as a player, and also what is the composer's message in this piece. Exactly. And to get back to the simple truths of life, the fact that the recorder uh, is in fact within, especially the early music movement, such an important instrument that it has actually elevated it to a, to a wonderful artistic yeah. position, which, which made it possible for you also to, to focus in such a specialized way on it. And, and, and the wonderful natural and beautifully simplistic results that one can get from that. Now, no, that is really very, 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 very interesting. Thank you for that enlightenment. I would like to know, what is the music scene like for your specific instruments in Europe? Is, it, is there a demand if, if for it? Um, do you play with orchestras? Do you play with ensembles? Do you give solo performances? Um, do you get regularly invited to play? To be honest, the recorder is no popular instrument, even not in, in Europe. Uh, you, I still have to do quite a number of really um, being an ambassador of my instrument. Mm -hmm. Because most mm -hmm. people, like South Africans, they think, oh, recorder, I played that yeah. when I was in sub A yeah. or the grade one. But that is like, um, if I do, I'm, if I'm at a, some or another party, people tell me, I also play the recorder. It would be like telling Michael Schumacher, I also drive a car. <laughs> it's just two different things. And um, it's for me as a recorder player, it's hard work getting enough concerts, but um, I am part of a lucky few people in Europe that can really live from playing the recorder. But I'm still working hard that people really love my instrument. That's, that's sort of a goal in my life, that all people have heard how an excellent recorder sounds like. Yeah, as I said before, for me it's, it's different, as I'm uh, um, mostly in demand as an... Guitar a player? No, no not a, I play very little guitar. Um, oh. I, know, I just play lute, but I'm uh, asked to, to accompany. To accompany, yeah, then there's a lot of yeah. lot and there's work. there's a big demand. Yeah. And then, then, I start, then the people say, oh well, could you play a solo recital for me? Um, then I get to, the, get to the solo recitals as well. So. Are you members of ensembles? Uh, I actually have sort of my own ensemble, yes. but you are a member yeah. of a couple of ensembles. I'm, I'm, I play with, uh, regularly with, with several ensembles. Musica Fiata Cologne, it's an ensemble that, is, uh, that does mostly 17th century music. Mm -hmm. I've recorded 20 CDs with them, and, uh, or even more, and it's uh, started to not be lost count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. I am really very grateful for you and especially for last night. Just just sad that we didn't speak about the, the jazz connection because we could have had some some things on that regard as well. But but that's for the next time. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> From my part, thank you very much and we wish you all the very best for the rest of your tour and, and, and for your future. Special thanks to Stefan and uh, Axel. We really enjoyed last night's concert and we hope to welcome you soon again here at the Odeon. The following aanbiedings by the Odeon School for Music is the duo for two, Magda de Vries and Frank Mellows, 13 Maart by the Odeon 1930, bespreek gerust by CompuTicket, and then a very interesting experience will be the world premiere be of the new concerto that Hans Huysen, played by the Leen Duplessis, dance professor in cello by the University of Otega in New Zealand.